YouTube, what the crap's going on? This is Air of Carthage, and I have some uh, awesome guests with me. I'll let them introduce themselves, so go on ahead. Hey, it's me, Killfish. Hey, everyone, it's Majitsu. Hello, everyone, it's the Prussian Prince. And the Rip here. All right, so what we're going to do today is um, a little bit of discussion to help you all out. So whether you're a new player or a more experienced player, um, no matter how much time you have in the game, hopefully this discussion will be helpful. And uh, I've got my army roster pulled up here, and I'm in my veteran page. And we're going to talk about some of my veterans and the upgrades I gave them. And these players that I have with me are all experienced with uh, tournaments and competitive play. And so they will give their input, and then, of course, you know, I'll give the reasons why I did the upgrades, and we'll have a nice discussion here, and hopefully even do a little bit of testing to show it to you. So let's get started. Um, so I have some, I have quite a few Monk Cav uh, veterans. I have about six of them. And some of you have asked me before, Air, how come you have so many veteran slots? Well, it's because I took advantage of the glitch back in the day, and I didn't take advantage of it enough, unfortunately. I've only got 119. <laughs> I should have jacked that up to about uh, uh, like two or 300 if I took the time. But um, in any case, I've got six Monk Cav veterans ranging in price from 912 up to... And I'm using Trading Post, too, so it's going to affect the cost. Trading Post reduces the cost by, what is it? Is it 10%? 4%. 4%. Okay, yeah, so it reduces the cost by 4%. Um, they range in price from 912 to 1286. So um, we'll start off here, and I'll just tell you, so whenever I have like a lower rank one, um, I mainly just focus on you know attack and defense, and I'll kind of pass it down the line to you all and, um, and let you tell me, like, so if you were going to have Monk Cav... How many chevrons would you put on it? Like, so say my, my lowest one has, um, I think, the upgrades on it are just uh, one attack and one defense at 912. It's not really worth much. And then my highest one has Warcry, um, let's see, three melee defense, morale, melee attack. Um, I put a bonus versus cav on it, and even a speed upgrade, thinking that might be helpful. So anyway, I'll throw the discussion to you all. Let me know what you think. Um, I okay. think it's well, it's just worth it with um, the bonus versus cavalry because without it, um, it it will just lose to to any y uh, yari calf. Even though um, the, the nagi calf has the four defense upgrades and the one attack uh, attack upgrade, it's yeah. You need the the bonus versus calf in my opinion. So should uh, I have I traded that speed for a bonus another bonus versus cav, or do you think just one bonus versus cav is good? Two, I guess. So. I only have one Nagi Monk Calf in my veteran slur and it has um, yeah, two bonus with Calf, one war cry for defense and one attack. <laughs> um, we get into very controversial points yes, from the very beginning. Indeed. <laughs> because I do not agree that level six or yeah, Monk Calf is worth it anymore. With the two bonus versus Calf. Just too expensive and they still do not stack up against the level two Yari Calf well. But that's just my opinion. Mm. What oh. upgrades would you use? I would go for perhaps just one attack and some defense, so max level 4, something like that. But personally, uh, at level 1 they're pretty good, just one attack. And then do not try to engage Cav, or not directly at least. Just focus on infantry. That's what I would do with Nagi Monk Cav. Mm. Mm. Well, from tests we did with Prussian Prince, and it was pretty decisive most of the time if you don't pull through somehow level 3 uh, warrior monk cavalry with one attack to defense it cost exactly like level 2 yari cavalry and after counter charge it actually wins like 70% of the time uh, in prolonged melee fight they win so really if there is no Micro, uh, if you can't really micro them well, if you can't pull back, charge again, Naginata War Monk actually can win at level 3 yeah, at the that, same price. Yeah, that's true. Mm, that's true. The, though the problem is that they do not have the same speed, so you'll often find more, well, most of the competitive players using Yari Cav over Monk Cav just because of the speed difference. And the other yeah. thing is, well, personally, I would use uh, Monk Cav at level 1, though I think they still might be worth it at level 3. It's some sort of hybrid between level 1 and level 6, 
some sort of uh, compromise. Yep, that's what I go would go for. But then again, having a war cry at level 5 or so, that's also pretty nice. So let me ask you all this. Um, overall, from a, let, let's talk first, amateur perspective, so you're just playing through, you know, random matchmaking. Um, monk, monk Cav, what would you use it for? And then competitive, would you use it? And if so, how would you upgrade it? And I'll just let each of you speak to it, so I'll let you go in order there and tell me what you think. Personally... I like the, the monk calf because it you you can also uh, dismount it and because it it loses no um, attack and also no defense so it it uh, it's, it's also a very tough melee unit yeah that's the reason why I use it yeah yeah that is yeah I I can see your point there uh, personally as for a beginner perspective they are pretty good because you don't have to look after them so much. If when they're in combat, they will do, they will do okay. They will not do uh, exceptionally well, but they they will stay for a long time in the battle because of yeah. the high morale, uh, good defense. Uh, for competitive play, though, like Prussian Prince said, I would go for speed over just the monk cap. So Yari cap or light cap. Yeah, the, uh, there's also a problem that the Yari, uh, the, the monk cap suffers so much from the the charge of a Yari cap. So. I, uh, when, whenever I use the Nagi calf, I try to absorb the, the charge of any other calf with a light calf or so. Because, um, yeah. That's but a good that's way difficult. to... Uh, yeah, that yeah. is pretty difficult. Russian? Uh, personally, if I bring them, I usually bring them level 1 because they're cheaper than a level 2 Yari calf and they still have quite decent attack values and high morale, so... I could use them in. I could use them for just to bolster my cab force at a cheaper cheaper cost than uh, vanilla Yari cab or uh, I mean level two Yari cab because I don't use vanilla Yari cab just because of its like they vanilla they have too low melee stats I think so I don't think it's worth it I prefer level one monk cab to that. Well, from amateur perspective, if you see how much most of the beginners play, they usually go for very defensive cavalry use. And in that scenario, war monk cavalry is definitely very good. Because if you don't plan to use your cavalry to run around, to really use that speed offensively, you just okay keeping that cavalry behind your line and just charge when you need it. And I really think it's pretty good at uh, tanky battles, uh, just because it's a good compromise between uh, Yaris uh, cavalry and Katana cavalry. So it's decent unit, but it has one problem. Uh, Majutsu didn't say why he really need the speed, and that problem would be mounted gunners and donderbars. Yes. Yari yeah. cavalry is as fast as light cavalry, and because of these two shooting units. Naginata war monks become not so useful. They can't catch it. So they would be kited all day and they would be destroyed in the end. Uh, uh, that's the main problem. Allow me to add on to the monk cav discussion. I think that a beginner might find it more useful to use monk cav instead of Yari cav just because it is more forgiving. Because with Yari cav you have to it's more important to pull out pull and back, charge yeah. again. Yeah, so there's less micro necessary to make monk cab effective. Yeah, exactly. All right. Good discussion. I like that. Um, let's, uh, for, for me, my original thinking on the monk cab, of course, this was back before mounted gunners entered the game, I believe. Um, or, well, yeah, yeah, they came before mounted gunners did because they came on the Eco Eki pack, I think. So, um, in any case, yeah, I, I liked them because, like what Zarib said, they were a nice middle-of-the-road unit. I could use them to hurt sword infantry pretty bad, and um, and they were decent in the cab fight, but the field has changed quite a bit since then. So, uh, great discussion there. Obviously, the shooting units are a big pain for monk cav. Um, as far as my Yari cav go, I got a bunch of Yari cav veterans. I started using them... Um, a while after I kind of I used monk cab a lot for a while and then I switched back to Yari cab because I found that their charge and bonus versus cavalry was pretty decimating um, and then 
almost all of my yard cab, I upgraded the charge to uh, 35. And my original thinking was, hey, I'll upgrade the charge, and then they'll just decimate an enemy unit on the charge. And uh, if I could decimate the monk cav badly enough, they would still win the fight, even though their um, attack and defense was lower. So generally, most of my yari cav are right around the uh, 1,000 to 1,050 range, and um, they have uh, 11 attack. With, well, unless I'm using retainers, I don't remember if I have the retainers turned on right now. I don't think I do. Um, but so it was, uh, I think I did two attack upgrades. Some of them had a melee defense upgrade, and then two charge upgrades. And my idea was to flatten someone on the charge and um, not really worry about the defense for prolonged melee. So I'll turn that over to you all and let, uh, let you tell me and the viewers what you think. Mm, yeah, personally, I prefer Yari Kev either level 2 with two uh, uh, attack upgrades or level 5 or 6. So um, the, the two charge upgrades, mm, I, uh, honestly, I, I've never tested it, so... I I uh, I can't give a fair response to this. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, well. But on, I'm sorry, killifish on level five. What do you take? Mm, I I give them um, two attack, two defense, and one attack with uh, clan tokens. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what I do for Yarkev, I personally have a bunch of them, uh, love, ranging between level two and level eight. Uh, just uh, to to fit them in an army when I just have uh, 50 Koku left or something like that. So um, I I also go for attack um, for level two ones, and then I start adding defense, and then also more attack. And for my level eight, I add two extra morale so to make them a second fire cap. That that's how I upgrade them. I do not upgrade charge. I did in the past, but I'm not. Entirely confident if that's better than defense. That's it. That should be. Yeah, we need to test that one. <laughs> well, we'll just go into a match it's, here in a minute and test it because I've got yeah. my charged veterans and you guys have the others. So once we get done discussing, we'll go test it. Yeah, that sounds like so, a good plan. Personally, I think uh, level two, level four, and level six are what I would take, but I only use level two, level six. I prefer to have either cheap and effective Yari Cav or like the strongest you can get. And for level 2, I think just because of their low defense, it's more effective to charge them in and charge them out. Although, because yeah, they have low defense and low attack at level 2, and it's just a cheap uh, and very reliable and effective unit at level 2. At level 4, uh, you, I just go with, I'd go with two attack and two defense. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't bother with morale or speed at this level. I think uh, it's better to get melee attack and defense first. Mm. Level you... four, it's it's a compromise between level two and level six, and you but could... you still don't use them. Yeah, I, I don't, but I think it's a, I think it's a good unit. You should start yeah. using them. <laughs> <laughs> Zerip, any final well, thoughts on the Yari Cav? Well, obviously, uh, as everyone can see, it's uh, level 2 Yari Key is uh, mandatory in any roster just because it's cavalry dominating unit, like uh, yeah. you can just take a lot of them. Now, when it comes to high upgrades, I have a couple of level 6 ones, so for melee attack to melee defense uh, the problem with charge I believe for most of the players when you play a lot you start noticing how random charge bonus is so sometimes with 25 bonus you can, can kill more than with 40 for example so and most of players who play competitively they prefer to control the game they don't want to rely on random factor and that's why probably no one really even tries to go into charge it it's very random another thing like whenever i see yari cavalry upgraded past level six i'm getting a bit itchy because you're getting into great god zone already uh, i mean in that price range and if you want such an expensive cavalry just take two vanilla great gods no i don't agree 
because you um, need a retainer for that. So that's yes, dull. you need, but they still would have hours and they would speed. Have... They don't <laughs> have the speed. Mm. Yeah, but such a, like, why would you take such an expensive cavalry unit? It only for one reason to deal with other melee cavalry. That's the only point. And that's where Fire Cavalry and Great Guards perform much better. Well, a high level Yari Cav can uh, do a lot of damage to infantry as well. Yeah, but it will not do, like, level 9 Yari Cavalry will not do more damage than level 6. It just will not. Perhaps, but the reason I put the two extra morale in there is that when I pull out, I'm not, I'm less likely to make the unit routes because when you pull out your cav, you're at risk of that cav unit routing. Well, probably it makes sense, especially if someone doesn't use leadership gem, then it makes additional sense. Yeah. But here, of course, we have one more variable in equation, and it's fire cavalry. But let's leave DLC units for later, I guess. Yep. All right, so yeah, there's a lot of differing opinions there. It'll be fun to test it out, and I, and I think that in the end, you're going to have some degree of randomness on the charge, obviously, that you can't overcome. And, and I was in the impression that, you know, the charge is usually something that, and back in the day, you saw me upgrading my charge on, like, my sword units and stuff, too, because I thought it was going to be great. Because when you test it on rice fields and you just go head-to-head, -head, it works. But like you said, when you're in like a match and stuff, you just never know how that's going to come or whether or not you get a clean charge. And so it definitely start, made me rethinking uh, you know, charge upgrades on lots of units. Um, so in any case, uh, let's move on to Bocav. I've got a range of Bocav. Um, this was one of my favorite units as well until mounted gunners came around. <laughs> um, I still like to use them as much as I can in just random matchmaking. But, um, and I've seen them in some competitive play. Uh, I have my most cost-effective ones um, that I set up, and you could do it even a little bit cheaper. Um, I set up some bocav with just, uh, let me get into the stats here. I've got uh, two reload, two accuracy, I turned on extra ammunition, and I've turned on swooping crane, but that's only just to test it out. Um, you could leave that off and I think save another 50 koku, and end up with a fairly cheap unit that actually has some pretty amazing shooting stats. I think your challenge is going to be, in a, in a world of mounted gunners, especially if someone's got like a 125 range, your bows aren't even going to fire before they come in and, and pop a volley on you and you're going to be in trouble, so it gets pretty difficult. Um, and then of course I find these guys to be very useful against you know, Ashigaru, uh, monks, um, not so useful obviously um, against heavier armored targets, but uh, fun harassment unit and that's generally what I use them for. Yeah, um, me too actually. Um, I gave them two ac accuracy and just one extra ammunition and don't uh, give uh, reload speed because actually it's just a a Harris uh, unit and um, I think re reload speed is not that, Im uh, that important on them. So, But I, I also have some bow cast with range upgrade and these guys are really tough. They have 90 accuracy. 50 reload and they they can kill so so fast and and so much. You mean 175 range? Yes. Yes, I had and one need... as well back in the day. Uh, the 175 was pretty nice because you could pick around at um. This was back in the day when people were using archers more. You could actually skirmish decently with the archers from a distance, and they wouldn't be able to hit you very well. Yeah. So what I should would do with bowcalf? I don't use them that often. Uh, but I actually would not bring any upgraded bocav, just bring vanilla ones. And the reason for that is I don't rely on bocav for killing. I rely on bocav for annoying my opponents and to make him make mistakes. So I don't need a high level bocav to do that. And yeah, actually, the most skills I get with bocav isn't actually from the arrows, but I, I used to charge them. I used them to charge in the rear or charge matchlocks, bows, whatever. Yeah, so, like a l light calf or so. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's where their usefulness is in more than in actually killing people with their uh, bows and arrows. Well, uh, I think if you use bow calf in a very fast game, so you so you know that your opponent will bring a lot of calf. I think bow calf is not that good in, a, in such a scenario. Uh, I think bow calf does best in um, slow games, so. Um, a, a lot of skirmishes uh, going on, and so... Yeah. Oh, definitely. 
like in the the high level games right now, it's very popular to bring skirmish caps like bow cav, mounted gunners, whatever. But people to counter that bring a lot of melee cav, and and that's bow cav are use, useless against melee cav. Yes, they can. Yeah. It's a really fast game. For those who don't know, bow cav cannot outrun yari cav or light cav, so it becomes pretty difficult. I think you can upgrade the speed and they can get close, but I think you get caught eventually. Yes. Yep. Yeah. You have though. to stay closer to your forces. So for the way I upgrade Bowcap is I just give them extra ammunition. I think that's I think that's just enough. In case it becomes a long skirmishing game and you might run out of ammo, so but I think it's just a safe fifty Goku investment. Just in case it would be a long drawn out game. You could also do it like uh Fish does it with the extra accuracy, but I don't. I think it's just safer to keep them level one with extra ammunition. Personally, mm, what you what you could also do is uh, to give them just two um, two accuracy uh, uh, upgrades. So they are still very cheap, but they have uh, a, a very good um, killing rate. And um, oh, well, actually, while we're talking about bow cavalry. Majuts, I think, can say a couple of words about Mounted Samurai, which he brings sometimes. It's a very related discussion. Okay, let's... Okay, we're jumping to Mounted Sams right away. Uh, Mounted Sams, they have less men and they are in loose formation constantly, but the one thing they have is they have a higher bow damage stat. Just a base bow damage stat. So that means every volley of arrows they, they release has uh, more chance of actually delivering a killing blow. So... And, and against higher armored units. So if you want to go for the kills with Bocav or just yes, Mounted Sams in this case, then yeah, I would go for Mounted Sams. And well, and they have uh, higher melee stats as well, so you can you can throw them against Light Cav and they will do okay. Yeah. And they actually fill the role that uh, Majuts uh, described to annoy opponent better because they cheaper. Uh, they almost hundred Koku cheaper, so. But really? it's harder to uh, charge match locks and bows though, because they have less men, so yeah. they, you, you can't afford much losses. Oh, well, personally, mm. I usually don't bring bow cavalry. I bring one mounted samurai, and the yeah. only reason is I I kind of don't like bringing mounted gunners myself on on ladder games at least, and uh, I still need some tool to annoy enemy match locks and uh, sort of fend off enemy mounted guns just to keep them away until my force come closer if I'm rushing for example you don't On really need to kill them uh, you just need to buy yourself time and most of the time so one other I trick I used to use with Bocav that I wanted to bring up and I don't know if you guys have ever seen it in use much but back in the day I used to actually bring these guys to a battle now this was before mounted gunners again uh, back when I felt bows had a lot more viability, and I would bring these guys and just dismount them from the beginning of the fight, and they had amazing stats when they were on foot. Um, in fact, they could almost beat a bow warrior monk if it weren't for the range disparity. Um, so I don't know, what would, have you all ever seen them used dismounted? Yeah, I've heard once. about that, but haven't seen it. Uh, brave against uh, oh, yeah, the bow but tycoon. I, <laughs> it, I don't think actually... they will kill bow monks at this point. Yeah, they got stronger. But actually, we got to this point where probably it's worse to say that generally bow cavalry and mounted samurai are much more useful than bow infantry in general. Uh, just because uh, they cheaper. They cheaper and they can kill some. And uh, I guess mobility. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah exactly. they, they have mobility. That's a great and point. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you guys brought that up. I'm sorry to jump in there, but that's... So I've been playing a bunch of games the last few nights where I've been bringing bows to see if I could kind of revive my old bows. Um, and in a world of <laughs> mounted gunners and, and match locks are just cheaper and they're, they're kill effective. And um, when I bring these bow units, like I, I played one match where my Daiki Samurai racked up 300 kills and I still lost the match just because of the damage that was done to me by matchlocks by the time I could kill their matchlocks. 
And so I, and I had to spend so much money bringing a, a Daikyu Samurai and the other ones that it just doesn't end up being cost effective. So like I, I mean, I can murder you know two or three units with the one bow unit. And so I like what you said, Zeripped, about the the bow unit being uh, cost effective and mobile. And I would definitely recommend that to my viewers. Um, if you don't know how to use bows well and you want something to outrange matchlocks, I I would prefer the bow cab almost every time, just because they're not so stationary as foot archers. They can move around and they can get shots quicker and from lots of different angles. Yeah, and, and that's where they come in. They can charge the matchlocks. When the matchlocks are going to chase the bow cab and they move up too far, you can just charge them. And with archers, yeah, you have to pull back. You can't do anything. Yeah. Actually, yeah, good time to remind people there is a button on keyboard, F button, which changes... Uh, uh, your unit uh, mod from melee to to shooting, and it's uh, actually pretty important to remember it. It helps a lot with bow cavalry. Because if you waste time trying to click that icon manually, uh, it ta actually takes a lot of attention. It's much faster to just click F and charge. Yep. yep. Alright, well let's um let's hurry and run through Katana Cab real quick and then let's uh move on to a battlefield we can all get in and spectate and just test a few of these. So Katana Cab, oh. um I and we'll talk about some of the rest of these cab veterans like DLC and other stuff, I, I think in a in a separate run here. Um but the Katana Cav um that I have I, I've got some of these guys ranging from level two or three all the way up to um uh, my Patchy's Pain Train, which is of course a very popular unit for my fans. Um, it has a ridiculous amount of upgrades and probably isn't cost effective, but um, it's, I think, more of an entertainment unit at this point. Um, so the the upgrades I usually use is I'll just throw on some attack. Like, you, you just throw some melee attack or even no attack if you get these guys in at the right. Um, I think even vanilla, these guys can be useful. Now, one thing that I've noticed about Patchy's Pain Train, um, it's got... Um, Let's see, uh, full melee, or almost full melee attack. I think I'm missing one clan upgrade. It's got two melee defense, a couple of charge, and on a charge, these guys will just absolutely flatten the light cav with almost no losses. But of course, you know, most people who use light cav know I'm not going to throw away my light cav into a unit like that. Um, but light cav can be dangerous, I think, to especially vanilla katana cav. And I've actually used these guys to support the cav fight sometimes. Like, so for instance, I'll charge in like a Yari cav or something, and if I have a numeric cav advantage, I can get the katana cav into the back of other cav, and they're actually somewhat effective whenever they don't take a charge. Um, but of course, you know, they're best against sword infantry and, and um, light units like uh, matchlocks and bows, but I don't know, we'll just run through and let me uh, let me hear what you all think about katana cav and what you'd do with them. All right, uh, I use the katana cav the same way as I used the Nagamon cav. I just uh, did uh, dismount them with uh, four upgrades for uh, two attack and two defense. So uh, dismounted they lose six attack I think and also eight charge but that doesn't ma matter so much because they still have 20 attack and 12 defense dismounted and, th and they have katana swords and they do actually even mm, mm, they do better th than Nagi Calf in, in in melee fight against inf infantry dismounted of course. And that's the only way I, I use them. So dismounted? Yes. Huh. I used them dismounted yeah. in a video recently, and I mean they they will really pwn units like Yari Ashigaru and um, uh, you know any attendance yeah. of course, and yeah. even some spear units. I mean they they hurt them pretty bad. Yeah. But the the reason why the why I I don't take them to to charge. Um, uh, sword units or so is because the Yari Cav does the same job and it's faster and yeah for the for the same price uh, level two yeah that's the way I use it. And no. I'm sorry. Let me. Uh, I just want to add. I, I don't know if it's true or not, uh, but I think the thing with uh, charge uh, when when you charge spear unit or spear cavalry. Uh, which has anti-cavalry bonus, they will have uh, first first roll in attack, I believe. So that's why charge on katana cavalry doesn't matter that much, because they will start killing one moment later, and it would be already too late to deliver real real blow. Like, I mean, when you talk about uh, fight against spear cavalry, if you're forced to do that, 
Uh, but against sword infantry, it, uh, would do good probably. Uh, okay, let me uh, talk about how I use katana calf and what levels. Well, um, firstly, I only dismount them when there is no other option. When my opponent only has spears, for example. And then only if I cannot deliver rear charges with them, because I like to keep my calf mobile when possible, but yeah, sometimes you have to dismount them. And in terms of upgrades, I would go for attack first, uh, if you want to make them higher level, at the defense, and then at the clan attack upgrades. And then you have a pretty beastly katana cat, to be honest. Uh, and they will just destroy any high level sword unit, and will even do a, a decent amount of unit of uh, damage to, to other calf or or spears. And they are great against melee gen. So if you know someone has a melee gen, <laughs> bring a super high level katana yeah, cab yeah. and they, they do do fine. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> oh shit, I stole yeah. it. <laughs> oh, it's fine. So, uh, personally, I just keep them level 2 with 2 attack upgrades. Because, and that's just because of a personal way play the game. Like, I can understand why others level them up to level 4 or level 6, but I use them at level 2 just because I want to invest more funds into the other parts of my army. I prefer to have more funds into anti-cav cav than uh, just anti-infantry cavalry, and uh, or just invest them into infantry. I just prefer to... And they, they just do really well against sword infantry, even at level 2 and they cause disruption yeah yeah well nothing much to add except for uh, can anyone tell me how fast they are compared to Naginata war monks it's uh, the same speed or it's like monk half monk yeah they're same as monk half okay I think so it's it's, it's, it's ten. a relatively slow unit but for people who kind of just beginners or lower level on ladder if you unlocked uh, Katana Cavalry, you definitely should use it more because uh, whenever you go against higher level opponent with more veterans, the only way you can really consistently deal with his uh, superior infantry is Katana Cavalry. So you know, I, I think it's unit a lot of people have to use uh, because it really helped me when I was uh, facing armies uh, with like level 6 uh, Nadachi, level 6 Katana Samurai, uh, something like that. Because if you fight infantry fight fair and square, you would lose. So, yeah. and that unit for, for its price, and it's quite versatile when you dismount it, it's just worth it. It's less worth when you have a good set of veterans, because generally if you have decent micro and can pull out, uh, Yari Cavalry really becomes your main tool uh, when you progress and have a good set of veterans. But even Vanilla Katana Cavalry at the beginning is a very good investment. Yep, so uh, I love all the comments so far. And I, you know, before we made this video, I, I don't guess I even realized how much there was to discuss. So we've got a lot to go through, <laughs> and I'm sure we'll make more. Of course, you know, it might require me getting up early on some weekends because I think. I'm the only one that's not in Europe right now, then, I, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I'm sorry. The lone American uh, here. Um, so, <laughs> in any case, uh, we'll, we'll have to keep this going because I really want my, I really want my viewers and, and fans, and I, I get so many questions about this game. And, of course, so many of my viewers think that I'm, like, the best player ever, and I think that, in all reality, I know that's not true, and a lot of other people know that's not true. And regardless of whether you're the best player there is a, you know, a logic and, you know, stuff that you can use in this game. So, like, for me, for instance, I know that I'm not going to come out and, like, win a game of Micro versus, uh, you know, Prussian Prince or Majutsu or Killer Fish. So if I was going to play them, I would pick an army to where my army is as forgiving as possible. Um, that way, you know, it's something that's better suited to my play style. And so I think that's one thing that's important to understand, too, whenever you're talking um, you know, what units to use and upgrades because I think you really probably have to discover your own play style and whether or not it's viable. Um, and, and so for me, that was a big deal was just kind of recognizing the fact that I'm probably not going to be able to outclick someone. So that's the reason why you'll see me use like Nagi Sam a lot because they're a somewhat forgiving unit. They're kind of middle of the road. Um, you know, if someone wins the cab fight, I've got 
you know, some recourse, you know, my guys won't be easily destroyed by Cav. Uh, those are things to think about too whenever you're, I think, a, a beginning player and, and how, you, how you adjust your game. Uh, anyway, I'll let everybody maybe just give some closing thoughts real quick and then we'll head out to uh, maybe Rice Fields and, and do a couple of tests. Actually, I can't add, some, uh, add, uh, add anything right now. I don't know. Uh, what, what I would add is that try to increase your calf micro because it's really important if you want to get better. And try using Yari Cav and Light Cav together because that's a really good combo. That's what I use. Just Russian? Just uh, actually, just join tournaments. That's <laughs> my suggestion. And the watch how people play. Try to learn, and watch uh, streams of tournaments. Because we cast uh, myself, Zrip, and others cast tournaments. So you can learn a lot from those. You you see you can see different types of builds. You can see spear builds, skirmish builds like killerfish. Uh, builds <laughs> and essentially that that's a very good way to learn to play the game but it might be a little bit high level though so Are we? yeah well if you we talk about learning the game it's actually pretty cool that uh, a lot of tournament players start uploading uh, live recordings for example on killerfish channel on prussian prince channel you can see the stuff from their perspective how they control their their army it may be pretty useful. I wouldn't consider myself a strong player, but there is some on my channel as well. But I, I don't know why we didn't talk about light cavalry. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but, I guess I, told, I don't have any light uh, cav yeah. fed, it's, so I, I didn't talk about it. Well, I guess we'll have to hit it um, on another discussion or something. Well, the thing is, just one melee attack if you have veteran slots. If you don't, use it vanilla, but it's a great unit to just run around uh, uh, annoying the opponent, and I, I just want to add to Majutsu's point when you say he says that you have to learn to use your cavalry. And what I did when I didn't have anyone to play with, uh, like I was creating custom battles. Of course, it's classical battles, but I was picking one unit for uh, two units of cavalry for me, two for computer, and play until I win all fights with all my units alive. Then I do three versus three then 4 versus 4 and my point was until I get computer beaten without losing any of my units I get them low but I don't lose them and that really increase your micro just that stupid training it doesn't even take so much time but it's very helpful because it's concentrated in big battle you don't know why you lost you don't know where you slipped but here you control only cavalry and it, you progress much faster. Yep, I believe. All right, uh, some good thoughts there. Um, I guess we'll we'll hop into a battle and then I'll start recording again whenever we get there to maybe just show you <coughs> a couple of my veterans that we discussed, uh, maybe versus some of the veterans that that uh, the these guys with us have set up for their competitive play, and we'll just kind of see how it works out. So we'll see you there.